Pheasant hunters can expect uh, a year similar to, probably a little better than last year. Last year was a decent year, um, and we had pretty good moisture conditions over the summer. So we expect there to be more birds in the fields this year. In terms of quail hunting, quail are a little bit different. Um, Bob whites in the southeast region look pretty good. Scale quail are a little bit down still um, from, the, from the heyday of a couple of years ago. And then in the northeast, uh, the bobwhite quail are kind of mixed um, results at this point. Some, some properties have good coveys and good size to the coveys, others not so much. It's real, just kind of spotty hit or miss a little bit in the, in the northeast. Uh, compared to, uh, to last year, um, the Eastern Plains probably had less big hailstorms. Um, certainly some counties, um, I can think of Kit Carson right offhand that probably had some pretty severe hail damage um, late summer this year, but uh, probably not to the extent of 2018 uh, where the, the entire range had big hailstorms. Scouting for uh, upland bird hunting or pheasants or quail is, is really important. Kind of the same degree it is for big game hunting. You know, a lot of times a, a group of hunters will get into an area where the the cover looks pretty good, um, but they're not seeing the birds that they normally would. Oftentimes that's due to a, a hailstorm earlier in the season that kind of hurt the birds and then the, the rain that came with it made the habitat grow back so it looks really good, but they're just, you know, the fields are kind of empty. Um, when you get in those situations, it might be a short drive away, maybe five, 10 miles. Um, you really never know until you talk to the, to the locals, to the landowners to see how big the footprint of that hailstorm was. But if you can get outside of that, you're much better off. Hunters should recognize there are some additional opportunities with walk-in access in 2019-20. Earlier last year, CPW decided to uh, go ahead and offer a, a big game expansion into the walk-in access program, and we signed up about 86,000 acres of land that allows big game hunting. Of course, to hunt uh, walk-in access big game properties, you have to have drawn a limited permit for the Eastern Plains in the, in the correct GMU that the property is in but there's quite a bit of opportunity out there. Um, we didn't count the number of parcels, but again, 86,000 acres, a lot of it pretty good CRP, which is really integral to uh, deer habitat on the plains. Some properties for pronghorn hunting, um, not as many as for deer hunting though. So really, if you do some scouting and you have one of those permits, you can find some pretty good stuff to hunt that's gonna be walk-in access. Um, keep in mind, walk-in is kind of first come, first serve, select, permission is not conveyed to, to either small game hunters or big game hunters on those properties. And you can find those properties in the walk-in access booklet um, or on the, on the online maps. The big game slash small game combo properties are marked yellow in the book and they have yellow signs in the field. If you see white properties or white polygons in the access book, uh, those are small game only. Um, those are properties where the landowner didn't want to allow big game hunting, but there was still enough small game value that we take those properties. Program as a whole um, enta entails uh, 173,000 acres in 2019, which is actually an increase of about 15,000 acres from last year. Lots and lots of opportunity out there. That's a significant amount of land. Um, again, we don't count numbers of parcels really, but it's well over 1,200 parcels. Private land that are now open to public um, small game hunting or big game hunting, depending on the, what the property is classified as in the booklet. 2019 marks the fourth year of the Corners for Conservation Initiative in conjunction with Pheasants Forever and we have now um, combined to create habitat on 400 sprinkler corners that basically range from northern Sedgwick County to Kit Carson County and as far west as into the edge of Washington County. Um, this is about 3,300 3, acres in total. All of them are open to walk and access hunting. So um, not only do you get the benefit of habitat improved and on the landscape for wildlife, um, hunters also have access to every one of those corners. Um, we don't depict those um, specifically in the Atlas brochure. Um, however, um, if they are signed in the field as Corners for Conservation Properties. Walk-in access is a program that's heavily dependent on landowner relations. And for the most part, we're doing really well in that regard. However, hunters can help us improve that immensely by doing things like not leaving trash or picking up trash that other people left. Uh, every year I get about a dozen properties that uh, get pulled from the program because of trashing concerns or um, bird cleaning or other types of things that really landowners don't really like to see on their property. It's real simple, just pick up your trash and if you see something that somebody else left, go ahead and grab it and take it with you and, and kind of help us, help us keep those properties in.